The combat system to Chrono Cross can be super simple or really in depth depending on how far you want to jump down the rabbit hole. This video jumps down a pretty decent amount. It's packed with a ton of info. Things like how to heal yourself completely after every battle, the best buffs to use and how to equip them properly, and even a couple element combos I use to deal massive damage to bosses. As always, if you think I didn't cover something I should have, let me know in the comments. Let's go over steel real quick. The steel accuracy rate is the exact same as the accuracy to your level 3 attack. And in order to raise it, just hit with multiple level 1s over and over again. I like to hit about 85 to 90%, and if I don't get the item I want, I just run away and try again. Stealing from enemies gets better later in the game, so remember that you're stealing as often as possible. This next tip gets really overlooked and it's not talked about very much. At the beginning of battle, you can choose who attacks first. Normally this defaults to whoever's leading your party while running around, but if you press the D-pad left or right, you can choose to have other characters lead off in battle. This can help you by building a strategy of winning battles more efficiently. You always have a choice to take out enemies really quickly with an AoE spell or to heal after battle. For instance, if Surge goes first and I find a bulky enemy, I can use someone else to buff Surge instead of just attacking with Surge right away. Or I'll buff with, say, Glenn, and with Lena, I'll build to level 3 or so, then have Surge take out the enemy so that Lena can heal the party after the battle. That's probably the main tip to take from this video. You can heal your party completely for free after every battle. But it does take a little bit of setup, so let's talk about that. Elements have levels associated with them, and you can place them on your grid either higher or lower than their actual level. For instance, Recover All is a level 3 element, but we can equip it to level 2 or level 1 here. Even though Recover All gets a minus 1 or a minus 2 near the name, it's still usable. So for this example, we'll leave Recover All right here. To heal yourself after every battle, all we need to do now is finish the battle with an element level out of 2. When the battle finishes, choose to heal with the remaining elements, and Lena will use Recover All to heal everyone after the battle. And just to get back to that minus 1, minus 2 thing, for each level down or up, this gives a 12.5% difference in power. So in this example, even though Recover All is on my grid at level 2 with a minus 1 near it, I'm only losing 12.5% of its power, which is a really good trade-off for healing after battle for free at such a low element level. Now if you're looking to focus on defeating enemies faster with elements, what you can do is equip AoE elements that hit multiple targets. The first common element you get like this is Magma Bomb, which is pretty weak at level 2. Eventually you want to upgrade to Meteor Shower. This is the first element you can really use to clear out common mobs pretty quickly. It's a level 4 element, and I like to drop it to level 3 on a unit like Lena, because she doesn't attack as often. For Surge, I'll just equip Meteor Shower on level 4, since he attacks all the time. Doubling up on AoE spells like this is going to take out common mobs for, I would say, 80% of the game. Elements are pretty strong up to mid to mid late game, but from there, physical attack damage starts to really take the lead, and you can start really taking advantage of that with element buffs, and there's a trick to equipping the buffs correctly. The most notable buffs and debuffs that you'll use are going to be Strengthen, Genius, Diminish, and Eagle Eye. To me, Eagle Eye is S tier. This is by far the most powerful element throughout the entirety of the game. Eagle Eye takes your attack accuracy and makes them all 99%, or close enough to it. Sometimes it'll be 97%. This lets you attack with level 3s with pretty much never missing. There's always that pesky 1% that you might not actually hit. The problem with Eagle Eye and the other buffs and debuffs is that they're all level 4 elements. With Diminish, it's a level 6 element. 
The big secret to these types of elements is that you can drop these down to level 1, and they will have the same efficiency if you equip them to level 4. This is huge to know. I like to start the battle by building to an element 1, then casting Eagle Eye on my main damage dealer, like Surge, then striking with level 3s at 99% accuracy to build the element level, and then I use an AoE to finish them off. With Diminish, because it's a level 6 element, the lowest you can place this element is level 4, but it's still really worth it. Diminish will decrease the element damage heavily, and most bosses use elements for big damage. So when you cast Diminish, you can use physical attacks with Eagle Eye, and while Diminish is cast, your damage won't be decreased because you'll be doing physical attacks for damage. The boss, on the other hand, will usually use elements. Keep in mind that when you cast Diminish, it does not go away, even if you cast Magnify, which is the opposite to Diminish, where it increases element damage by 150%. The point is that Diminish will still be in place for the entire battle, even if you cast Magnify over it. So keep all that in mind when we go over this next tip, because it'll take Diminish and increase its effectiveness even more. At the top left here, you've probably noticed the field effect graphic, and this mechanic takes into consideration the last three elements that were used. There's two big takeaways from the field effect. First, when the field is all one solid color, such as all blue, only then can you cast a summon. We'll go over this in just a little bit. The second thing to know about the field effect is that every color boosts and decreases the damage you do depending on the innate color of the character. Now that was all pretty confusing, so I'm gonna break it down with this example. In this boss battle facing Lynx, Surge is really useful because he's a white innate. He can deal a ton of damage to Lynx because his innate element is black. But you can see here that the field effect is filled with red, black, black. And because of this, Surge is doing a lot less damage. And Surge is also taking more damage. For every color on the field effect, a 12.5% boost in damage is given. And at the same time, for innates that are opposite of the color in the field effect, their damage is decreased by 12.5% and they take more damage by that 12.5% increment. So in this example, Lynx now has a boost of 25% in his damage. And if he attacks Surge, Surge is gonna be taking 125% more damage, all of that equaling out to Lynx doing 150% more damage to Surge. The big takeaway here is that you wanna to try to fill the field effect with the opposite color of your enemy as best as possible because it decreases their DPS while also increasing the amount of damage you can do to them. This is especially true if you're using a character that has the opposite innate color of the enemy. Now remember Diminish? If you throw Diminish on top of everything we just went over, you'll find that bosses are going to be barely damaging you with their strongest attacks. I know that can get kind of confusing, but I hope this example can make things a bit more straightforward. Just try your best to fill the field effect with the opposite color of your opponent. You'll be way better off doing that. There's a couple of element combos I like to use specifically. The most common combo I use throughout the entirety of the game is Eagle Eye and Strengthen. This will bring your accuracy to 99%, and with Strengthen, the damage you'll do will be even greater. Rod users like Guile attack all enemies with their level 3 attacks, so Eagle Eye works really well for characters like Razzly, Van, and Guile, people like that. I'll sometimes leave out Strengthen, because I don't really find it's needed all the time. But when it comes to bosses, I do like to use both Eagle Eye, then Strengthen. Eventually you'll get the Dreamer Scarf accessory, which is one of the best in the game in my opinion. This will let a character start the battle with a level 1 element before they even attack. So you can go straight into using Eagle Eye on your main damage healer. Then, you can go straight into using an AoE spell to do tons of damage to all the other enemy units. I always have Eagle Eye and Strengthen equipped on every character. It's such a good combo. The magic version of Eagle Eye Strengthen is weak-minded and genius. Casting weak-minded on an enemy decreases the enemy's magic defense, and genius increases your magic attack power. 
Great for casters like Lena, Harl, Guile, Razli, people like that. And even stronger when you're pairing this combo with a summon. There's a variation of this combo that I like to use, which is weak-minded and magnify. Both elements in this case are white, so they fill the field effect pretty nicely. Typically you want to use this combo to set up a white and eight, like Surge or Riddell. My favorite combo deals with Surge and Glenn, and this is the combo I was alluding to at the beginning of the video. I like to use Turn Blue on the boss at the beginning of the round. Then, later on, I'll use Turn Red on Surge, and use Strengthen on him as well. After that, I build Surge's element level to use X-Strength, which will do insane damage. This combo is incredibly strong, and works even better if you have an enemy unit that'll use a red element in order to fill the field effect for you, so you can deal out even more damage. As I was saying earlier, you can only cast a summon if the entire field is the same color as the summon you're going to cast. Setting this up takes a little bit of preparation, both outside of battle and during the battle itself, so here's how to do that. To make things simple, we're going to stick with Frog Prince as our example. When you're allocating your elements, I like to set a couple blue elements on my level 1 slot with each character. So for this example, we'll use Aqua Ball, Cure, and Cure Plus. We're just going to place them on level 2 and level 1 accordingly. Lean is going to be the caster here, and she needs to allocate Frog Prince since she's a blue innate. Now we're ready to head into the battle. For the first phase, my main goal is to build my element level with all characters. And ideally, I want to do this before the boss gets their turn. It's okay if we don't, but that's my main goal. With Lena, I need to build to level 5. Now we're going into phase 2. When the boss takes its turn, that's when we're going to set up the field. So phase 1 is build the element level, phase 2 is to set up the field. Phase 2 only begins after the boss takes its turn because there's going to be a good amount of time to set up the field and cast the summon. What you don't want is for the boss to take its turn while you're setting up the field because if the boss uses an element, the field color will get all screwed up and you'll need to set up the field all over again. Your goal is to be able to get the summon off before the boss can change the field effect. This is just a general idea of how to cast summons, but keep in mind, if you start to learn the enemy attack patterns, you can start using the boss's turn to help set up the field for you. All that being said, just keep in mind that summons are extremely powerful. Knowing how to use them when you want is key to burning through the bosses of Chrono Cross. I didn't cover trap elements in this video, it's something we'll leave for its own standalone video. And I'm sure that there's other tips people have for combat, so please, comment them down below for people to see.